Boker Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and this morning we have very breaking news coming from FARS News Agency, along with other news, uh, news agency. The, the Sputnik News is reporting that uh, some 30 Israeli foreign intelligence officers killed in a Russian caliber missile attack in Aleppo. And uh, according to this here, it says several U.S., Turkish, Saudi, Qatari, and British officers were also killed, along with Israeli officers. The foreign officers who were killed in Aleppo operations room were directing the terrorist attacks in Aleppo. Guys, this is very concerning that we're hearing this type of news coming out of uh, Syria uh, this morning, and it is also being very hush-hush in Western media, and the reason it is being hush-hush in Western media is because the question has to be asked, what are Israeli officers doing there? What are U.S. officers, Turkish, Saudi, Qatari, and British officers doing there? As I have stated all along, it is nothing but a false coup that happened in Turkey under the under Erdogan. I believe it was orchestrated by the United States along with President Erdogan in order to get Turkish military forces and boots on the ground there. And now we see that the U.S., the Turkish, the Saudis, the Qataris, the British, and the Israeli officers are all inside this secret place here coordinating terror attacks inside of Syria. And although I love my countrymen, both U.S. and Israeli uh, countrymen there, it's still, what are we doing in Saudi Arabia? And I, I want to state this because I know there's going to be many that are going to be concerned about uh, the fact that this news has happened. It's going to be a cry from the West to bring about war against Russia. But you have to understand, Russia is actually trying to stop this whole rebel force that's going on and this whole so-called moderate rebels is trying to overthrow the country. But I am not the only voice from the United States that is sounding this alarm that we have no business to be in Syria. They have demonized uh, President Bashar al-Assad as being some kind of madman, gassing and using incendiary devices, etc. on his people, only to find out that it's to the contrary. Even Aaron Erdem, the former Turkish uh, MP member of the parliament in Turkey, he was the first one to reveal that the 2013 gas attacks that happened in Syria were never conducted by Bashar al-Assad, but it was coordinated with the West, smuggling in chemical weapons from Europe into Turkey, through Turkey, and Turkey's court turned a blind eye. They replaced the judges, everything, slipped in the chemical weapons, did the attack so that they could blame it on Bashar al-Assad. And we're finding out similar things <clears throat> Again, with this situation that is happening even now with incendiary devices, that it is not Russia that's doing it, but we're finding that even recently Saudi Arabia, also they've been given phosphorus uh, munitions. They're using it against the people in, uh, in, in Yemen. And as well, those things are coming into the hands of, of the groups inside of Syria, being used against the civilians only to build a momentous campaign, media campaign in the West to try to demonize the Syrian people. And one thing I might add to that, and this is what we're going to close out this news broadcast with, I want you to hear, this here is a panel, I'm only using three of the five that are in there, but I want you to listen to what a U.S.-led delegation that went to Syria firsthand, went to Damascus, and found out that it was nothing but a bunch of lies and propaganda by the U.S. government that is controlled by the U.S. corporate media to demonize Syria and to make it look like as if the Assad was a regime and was trying to, to, to just dictate over his people. They met with both opposition and Syrian forces, and they come back with a report that clearly lets us know that this had nothing to do, but with false propaganda, it has been a, a constant desire to bring down Bashar al-Assad. For what reason? There's other things we could go in on that, but right now we're trying to cover the breaking story here that yes, indeed, Russia has fired missiles and there has been a tremendous loss of life, both U.S., Israeli, 
uh, and uh, the Saudis, the Turkish, and Qatar. They are all involved in trying to crush this country down, and Russia finally is standing up and is going to bring that down. Now, I know many of my friends would say, are we looking at Ezekiel 38 as far as from a prophetic standpoint? We may be. Some have said Russia would be, uh, the, the Ezekiel 30 would be Gog. I think it's personally America that is Gog, and this may be the one thing here that drags all of their armies inside of here to try to take Russia out. Then others might say this would be the hook in the jaws for Russia and bring them down, but Russia is one nation, and we see in the, the prophecy of Ezekiel that it is jaws and uh, hooks, plural, so it is a multinational force that comes in, and we see a multinational force there. I, my, my condolences though also go those to those families, the U.S., the British, even the Turkish and Saudis. I mean, still these are loved ones of people that have died in this, just as the loved ones of the Syrians that have died in this war as well. As we've seen, the, the, the sad cases of, of it's loss of life, friends, is a loss of life. It doesn't matter what nationality. I do have a heart for that, and my condolences to all the families that have died into this. But I think if the West would have stayed out of Syria, we wouldn't have the problem we're having today. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. It was our consideration that we had to reach out to the U.S. peace movement and ask that they participate in a delegation to Syria to see for themselves what existed, to speak to both officials and non-officials, civil society, to try to determine for themselves, independently, the situation in Syria and the road to peace. That is our responsibility. Our responsibility is to reach out first to the U.S. peace movement and then to the American people. The campaign to confuse the American people has been intense. And it is our purpose to try to bring some light, some understanding, which can perhaps lead to the American people demanding an end to the intervention and peace in, in, in Syria. What Alfred said, is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote unquote, humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. The United States prefers uh, a government that is not independent, that is a willing uh, participant in what the US, whatever US policy is. So what we saw in, in Damascus and what we saw in the two villages we visited outside Damascus belies the propaganda that has um, overwhelmed us. It's hard, it, it, it's hard for even those of us who have been in the peace movement for a long time, it's hard for us to ignore this propaganda. It is so uh, well orchestrated. Work together, coming back in cooperation to try to bring the message and the truth back to the United States. Um, as an American citizen, it is shameful for me uh, to admit what my government is doing in the sovereign country of Syria. Uh, we have no right to impose these illegal sanctions. In fact, these sanctions, allegedly, the government says, are against the, the, the government of Syria. But in fact, it's against the people, civil society, people who are attempting to maintain uh, the infrastructure, the health care, the safety of all Syrian people. 
One of the things that um, stood out to me is not only the, the lack of medication and the fact that Syrian children are dying because they can't get chemotherapy meds into the country because of the illegal sanctions that the U.S. and the West has imposed. Uh, also, it's, they're not allowing parts and uh, material to get to businesses who are uh, trying to maintain. And they're trying to maintain for more than one reason, and not just to, to, to keep continue to make money, but to employ people. Because when people have no way to earn a living, they become desperate. And we know that some of the Syrian people who may have chosen to join the terrorists, mostly for economic reasons, because they couldn't earn a living. And their benefactors, the US and all the others who are collaborating together to fund this terrorism, are paying people very well to, main, to, to, to participate in this illegal activity against the Syrian people.